اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ٹوڈے اوور لیسن از اے لیول اسلامک اسٹڈیز پیپر ون اسٹڈی آف سیٹ ٹیکس فرام دی ہولی قرآن پیسج نمبر تھری ڈیٹ از فرام دی سورا المائدہ ورس نمبر ایٹی نائن اینڈ نائنٹی دی ٹاپک آف دس پیسج از انٹاکسیکنٹس Look at the passage. In this passage there is a two verses. First verse is 89. In this verse Allah says, Allah will not call you to account for what is futile in your oath, but He will call you to account for your deliberate oath, for expiations, feet and indigent persons, on a scale of average for food of your families or clothe them or give a slave his freedom if that is beyond your means fast for three days that is the expiation for the oath you have sworn but keep to your oath thus does Allah make clear to you his signs that you may be grateful In the next verse Allah says, O oh, you believe, intoxicants and gambling, dedication of stones and deviation by arrows are an abomination of Satan's handiwork, handwork, excuse such abominations that you may prosper. This passage is taken from Surah Al-Maida. There are two verses in this passage. Verse number 89 teaches us about the oath and verse number 90 about intoxication and gambling. Allah says in 89, Allah does not take you to task for the unintended oath you swear. But he will surely call you to account for the intentional and deliberate oath you make. Yani, sometime insaan jo hai, kuch kasam uthata hai, to wo dil se nahi, balke uske muh se nikal jata hai, kasam ke alfaz, ya kuch logon ka takia kalam hota hai, to is surat mein, اللہ اس قسم کا مواخذہ نہیں کرے گا جو ان انٹینشنل یا تکیہ کلام کے طور پر منہ سے نکلی ہے بلکہ اسی قسم کا اللہ مواخذہ کرے گا اسی اوت کے متعلق اللہ پوچھے گا جو ہم نے انٹینشنل اور ڈیلیبریٹلی اٹھائی ہے دا ایکسپیشن یعنی کفارہ آف بریکنگ سچ این اوت از ٹو فیڈ ٹین انٹیجنٹ پرسنس ود اے نارمل فوڈ You serve in your own family or to give them cloth or to free one slave or one who cannot afford any of these, let him fast three days. Yani, aisi kasam jo intentionally uthai gai hai, uska agar wo puri nahi kar saka, to uska kafara ye hai ke ya to das پور پیپل کو کھانا کھلائے یا ان کو کپڑے دے یا ایک غلام آزاد کرے لیکن اگر ان تینوں میں سے کسی چیز کی ان طاقت نہیں ہے تو پھر تین روزے رکھے دس از دا ایکسپریشن آف بریکنگ سیریس اوتھ یو ہیو ٹیکن بی مائنڈ فل آف یور اوتھ دس اللہ میکس از کمانڈمنٹ پلین ٹو یو so that you may show gratitude. 
the commandment about the oath has been laid down here in the connection with the instruction about food because some people had taken the oath of making some lawful thing unlawful for themselves the commandment is that if one uttered a word of oath without any intention behind it one shall not be beyond to observe it for there is no punishment or expiation any kafara for this but if one has deliberately taken such an oath one must break it and compensate the violation because one must repeal such a sinful thing yani kisi aise insaan ne koi qasam uthai hai jo ke kisi halal cheez ko haram karne ke liye ya haram cheez ko halal karne ke liye allah ke qanoon ko todne ke liye usne qasam uthai hai to aisi qasam ko tod dena zaruri hai aur uski todne par usko qasam ka kafara dena padega aisi qasam जो इंसान ने उठाई है किसी भी हलाल चीज़ को हराम करने के लिए या हराम चीज़ को हलाल करने के लिए या किसी गुनाह का काम करने के लिए उसे कसम उठाई है तो ऐसी कसम को तोड़ना ज़रूरी है और उसका कफारा देना भी फिर ज़रूरी है बी माइंडफुल ऑफ एन ओथ यानी जो आयत में ये वर्ड है बी माइंडफुल ऑफ एन ओथ इम्प्लाइज थ्री थिंग फर्स्ट one should make the right use of an oath should not take it for useless or sinful thing kisi bhi guna ke kaam ke liye qasam ko nahi uthana chahiye secondly when one takes an oath for anything one should remember it least one should forget it or violate it thirdly if one takes a deliberate oath to do right thing one must fulfill it and if one violate it one should expiate the sin yani uska fir kafara wo zor de in the next verse four thing has been made absolutely unlawful they are wine gambling ungodly shrines and divining devices before making wine absolutely unlawful yani haram in this verse two other commandments concerning its prohibition has already been given in surah al bakara verse number 219 they ask you about wine and gambling say in them is great sin yet some benefit for people but their sin is greater than their benefit and surah an-nisa verse number 43 allah says oh you who have been believed do not approach prayer while you are intoxicated until you know what you are saying yani इस पैसेज के अंदर जो अल्लाह ने चार चीज़ें जो हराम की हैं उसमें पहली चीज़ वाइन है तो वाइन के मुतल अल्लाह ताला ने इस सूरत से पहले दो और सूरतें दो और अल्लाह ने वर्षित उतारी थी एक सूरह बकरा की और एक सूरह निसा की अल्लाह ताला हर चीज़ के मुतल जानता है जो उसकी कमांडमेंट है लेकिन उसको इम्प्लीमेंट करने के लिए अल्लाह तला ने स्टेप बाय स्टेप हर चीज़ को अल्लाह ताला ने हराम किया है तो पहले जो वर्ष सूरह बकरा में आई 219 में अल्लाह ताला ने पहली सूरत नाजिल की उस वक्त लोग शराब पीते थे लेकिन उस आदत को फौरी तौर पे उनसे छुड़वाना ये मुमकिन नहीं था यानी ये अगर करते तो हो सकता है लोग ये ना कर सकते तो अल्लाह तला ने उनको पहले कहा कि इसके अंदर बेनिफिट्स भी हैं और इसका इसके अंदर सिन भी हैं लेकिन उसका सिन बड़ा है उसके बेनिफिट से तो कुछ लोग उसको छोड़ गए या कम कर दिया फिर अल्लाह ताला ने 
دوسری ورس اللہ تعالیٰ نے اتاری سورہ نساء کی اس میں اللہ تعالیٰ نے کہا کہ do not approach prayer while you are intoxicated کہ جب تم نشے میں ہو تو اس وقت نماز نہ پڑھو نماز کے قریب نہ جاؤ تو اس کے بعد بھی کچھ لوگوں نے شراب اور کم کر دی یا اس کو چھوڑ دیا لیکن فائنل اللہ تعالیٰ نے اس صورت اتاری اس پیسج میں سورہ المائدہ کے اندر جس میں اللہ تعالیٰ نے کہا کہ یہ بالکل حرام ہے سے بچ جائے بیفور دس لانس کمانڈمنٹ واز گیون مولی پرفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم اڈریس دا پیپل ان آرڈر ٹو پریپیر دیم فار اٹس ایبسلیوٹ پرہیوشن ہی وارن اینڈ سیڈ اللہ ڈز ناٹ لائک ایٹ آل ڈیڈ پیپل شوڈ ڈرنک وائن probably absolute prohibition will soon be prescribed therefore those who have wine are advised to sell it sometime after this when the verse number 90 was sent down he declared no those who possesses wine can neither drink it nor sell it they should therefore throw it away accordingly it was spilled in the streets of medina to run wastefully some people however asked the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam may we give it as a present to uh, to the jews he replied the one who has traded it unlawful has also forbidden to give it as a present other asked may we convert it into wine gar he replied no you must spill it yani jo cheez haram hai usko to na hum uski trade kar sakte hain na hi hum usko convert karke uska koi aur cheez bana sakte hain masalan sharab ko agar sirka bana le to wo bhi jaiz nahi hai another asked again and again is one permitted to use wine as medicine the holy prophet categorically rejected this also and said no it is not a medicine but a disease yet yet another asked o messenger of allah we live in a place which they which is very cold and we have to tired some labor so we drink wine to refresh ourselves from the fatigue and keep to keep warm in cold he asked in what you drink intoxicant the man replied yes the holy sallam replied then refrain from it at this the man said the people of our part of the country will not submit this he replied if they do not submit to this then go to war with them though originally the arabic word hamar mean only wine made from grapes but it was also applied to the liquid made from wheat barley dried grapes dates and honey the holy prophet sallam applied the prohibition to all the intoxicants and there are traditions any hadith that clearly support this for instance every intoxicant is khamar and is unlawful every drink that intoxicates is unlawful i prohibited every intoxicant in this connection the holy sallam let down the journal principle if a large dose of something is in is intoxicant then its smallest dose also is unlawful and if a cup of anything is intoxicant then a drop of it is also unlawful prohibiting maser any gambling 
Allah forbid his believing servant from consuming khamar intoxicants and maser gambling is ayat ke andar char cheezein jo allah ne haram ki hain usme to ek intoxication yani khamar tha aur dusra maser yani gambling every type of gambling including children's playing with the certain type of nuts game of chance which cause to lose or gain is maser yani gambling because it makes a man lazy and he always depends on luck does not hard work meaning of ansab teesri cheez jo is ayat ke andar hai wo ansab the ansab means stones idols which were made of stones in those penalty sacrifices were offered during the time of jahiliya in the time of ignorance unbelievers who worship idols go down to them dedicated sacrifices for them allah forbid it because it is shirk that is the biggest sin all type of worship prayer fasting sacrifices and oath are for allah meaning of azlam al azlam war arrows that they use for lotteries to make decision it was the method of unbeliever to plan any work they wrote an on arrows themselves different thing and kept them in quiver and after closing eyes they picked one and made plan as written on it in this way all type of foretold foretells are haram prohibited in islam yani koi bhi cheez is tarah ko kismat ka hal batane ke liye agar hai chahe wo arrows par ho ya wo parchiyon par ho kismat ka hal janne ke liye jo kiya jata hai wo haram hai purane zamane mein agar log wo arrows par karte the aaj kal usko kismat ke liye wo parchiyon pe likh ke tote se faal niklwate hain ya kisi aur tarika se to har tarah ki kismat ka hal is tarah janna ye haram hai allah says those which are sacrificed sacrificed on stone altars and prohibited is that you seek decision through divining arrows yani ye cheeze haram hai dear students it is our lesson today i hope you all understood allah hafiz